Hey guys, Vaka here again with another video. This time I'm gonna be trying to fix the sound for my CPS2 uh, Darksoft system. So I've been noticing that sometimes when I turn it on after it hasn't been on for a while that the sound wouldn't come out of it. And I was told that it could be possible that you know one of the sound capacitors here is going bad. So I bought a couple of these guys and I'm gonna replace it in here and uh, hopefully that'll fix the issue. And another issue I have is the LCD screen on the Darksoft is actually really bright. I think I messed up one of the potentiometers that uh, when I was opening it before, maybe I turned it and it's turned dialed up too high. So now it's really hard to read. So hopefully I can fix that too. And um, I've been thinking, I kind of want to put the LCD screen here in the slot for the this Jason's Customs case because before I thought I would need access to it from far away, but I'm, now I'm thinking about it, it's this really long cable has been a real pain. So hopefully I can just get it in here so it's just all self-contained. All right, let's get her open and then uh, let's try to replace these capacitors first. Okay, now that we have the Darksoft B board off, here's the A board. It does have a lot of these cables on here due to my uh, the CPS2 Digi AV that I installed prior. So here's the actual capacitor that we need to be replacing. So I have to get this off and then uh, replace that guy. All right, so I flipped the board around. Uh, it's nice that they do have this marking here for that one. So that's the one we'll be taking out and then pulling a new one in. After about an hour of fiddling with this thing, I'm finally able to get the new capacitor on here. Um, the old one was extremely hard to get off. It uh, took me a less while, it took me a long time. Not only that, like the hole was too small, I had to open it up bigger enough so I can stick the new one in there and it was just a huge pain in the butt. Just gotta go real slow, make sure you don't break anything. So now I'll put it back together and uh, test it out. All right. Success looks like we do have sound, so nothing's broken. It is working. Also, all the buttons work ranking. I was checking it. So, here we go. Uh, I guess the next thing I'll check is through the HDMI, but that should work too with the regular stuff working. All right, the uh, volume was also working on the HDMI out, so I think we're done with this project. Oh, yeah, one last thing. I guess I will have to fix. Let's see if we can fix this guy right here. As you can see, it's like it's really hard to read. All right, so the LCD screen doesn't actually fit into the case if the, the cable is plugged into here, it bulges out. So what I'm gonna do is take the back here and uh, just solder these cables into there and then plug these guys into the existing cable that I have over here. So luckily I have a bunch of these extra wires. So that should work. Let's try it out. So I ended up jury rigging my own little connector thing. It's connecting into the pins of the belt that came with it. And I soldered it to end. So it is working. As you can see, it's showing a little funky. I think just because maybe the LCD screen is, maybe has gone bad a little bit. I did adjust the lighting on it. So now at least we can read it. So it's still working fine. I might've dropped it a little too many times because it was not set in place. But now that it is working, I'm gonna put it back into the case and then we'll close her up and finish the project. All right, the case is finally put back together. We have the LCD screen installed on the side inside of the case now, so it's not flopping around outside. Everything's closed, everything's working. All the sound is also working. So that's it. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.